Hi, this is Peter Rossi again, um, back to talk to you about getting uh, data in and out of R. <clears throat> uh, so in order to do all of the work in the class, you don't actually have to read any data in and out of R because I included it in the PER regress package to facilitate that and, and allow people to concentrate on the course material. But obviously in the real world, we'll want to read things in and out. So let's take some examples of that. So first, let's just uh, uh, access the flat panel television set, um, which is an internal R data set, a data frame as we know, containing 70 rows and five columns. Let's now write this out as a comma delimited, delimited, delimited file, so-called CSV file. And there is a function in R for that called write.csv. I've highlighted that uh, function um, call here. I have to tell tell it what data frame to write out. I'm going to write out the flat panel television data set frame. I need to uh, name it a particular name. Um, and then uh, write.csv by default will include both row and column names. So the column names I think we want because those are the variable names. The row names are a bit redundant. They're just the row numbers and uh, just creates an unnecessary column um, for import into Excel or whatever other program you're using. So I usually would set row names equal to false. And we've now run that. And if you look at files, we can now see that uh, file there. It's called flat, um, flat panel underscore out dot CSV. We could then go and read that into Excel and save it, which I've also done. So here is this file, file called flat panel dot XLS. Um, dot XLS. Um, so that's just the XLS version of the same file. I'm not going to go into Excel and read things in. Obviously, everyone knows how to do that. Um, so anyway, um, so that's to, to, to get something out of R. Now let's read it back in again. And that's easily accomplished as well with the corresponding function called read.csv, which reads C, comma delimited or tab delimited files. You can actually specify any delimiter. They're free format files. In other words, there's no particular uh, order um, um, columns corresponding to particular fee or fields created in the files. They're just fields separated by whatever the, delimit de the, the, the specified delimiter is. So let's run that. And that's going to create another copy, actually, of flat panel. It says flat panel underscore again, which is, of course, the same data set. I've just basically read it out and read it back in again. Okay. Now, a number of you will want to <clears throat> read in directly from Excel. There, there's two ways to do this, I mean, to read in from Excel. One is to take an Excel uh, spreadsheet um, and then um, save it as a .csv file. Okay. That's one way to do it. Of course, that destroys the idea that in, a particular, in an Excel workbook, there can be multiple spreadsheets or worksheets, I think they call them. Um, so uh, a more convenient way to do it is uh, to use the uh, contributed package XLSX, which I've written here in my library command. I've downloaded and installed it. This will make it active. And use the corresponding <clears throat> function read.xlsx, which is, of course, to read files um, of that format. Of course, you have to tell it what the file name is. I'm going to say header equal true, meaning I'm going to um, say this file contains as its first row um, a, um, you know, a, a, the variable names. Um, and then uh, I have to tell it which spreadsheet or worksheet within the workbook to read. Since this file only has one, I'm going to say sheet index equals one. There is also a variable called sheet name which allows you to specify the string name of a spreadsheet name uh, so that if it is named, typically we would name them by names. So here, what I've done here uh, is to do that. So let's execute that command. Okay. And it's read it in. So now I've actually created three copies of a flat panel. Flat panel again, which is the one we did by writing it out as a comma delimited file and reading it back in. And then finally, this one that we created by reading directly an XLSX file. And of course, these are all the same. Okay. So um, that, that's pretty much all you need in terms of getting in and out vis-a-vis -vis, uh, flat files or text free format text files or Excel files. Um, there is a package called foreign, 
F -O, the, the word foreign in lowercase, and that allows you to directly read STATA files, SAS uh, files, and SPSS files, um, to name but a few of the more popular STAT packages. So you don't have to write out a file from SAS, you don't have to write out a file from STATA, you can read in them directly if you want to. So I'd refer you to the foreign package if you want to do that. And again, it has the same sort of thing, uh, read functions uh, in, in it that allow you to read the files. Okay, one last thing you can do is um, all of the commands within R that read and write things can also use what's called a connection as opposed to a file name, a specific file designation. So in particular, if there is out there, you can re read web pages um, from, um, directly into R and parse them yourself. In other words, you'll read in and you'll get all this HTML stuff and you can find, you can use, look for things in the web pages to scrape the web and all that. Um, I am not an expert in that. There are all kinds of tutorials on the web about it and packages to do that. Let me just do something rather simple here. I'm just going to read in a CSV file from the Yahoo Finance site. So I'm going to read in uh, the stock quotes for Google, daily stock quotes for Google, um, in this command here, which I'm highlighting. So I'm creating a data frame called Google, which is going to read, use the same command read.csv, but I'm giving it in quotes an a, a URL. And that's URL is to the finance uh, portion of the Yahoo site. And it has a particular sub page called a table page. And I have to tell it what ticker symbol to use. And so that's what this question mark S equals Goog is, is actually that ticker symbol. Okay. So again, that is, doesn't require any extension packages. That's using directly stuff in base R. So now I have a, a um, data frame called Google. Google has seven variables in it. Let's take a look at what's in Google. Google, you can see, has the date, the um, open, high, low, close, some volume, and I don't actually even know what the adjusted close number is, but uh, suffice it to say, it looks like it's pretty much always the same. Um, so let's actually then uh, plot this data. One thing to note is although the open, high, low, and close are in dollars and don't need are just standard numerical variables, the date variable um, is in a date format, uh, basically an Excel type date format. Uh, if we look at structure Google, um, so it's actually read in date as a factor because what R does is it looks at this this, the values that are in this variable, the date variable, and says these are just strings. I don't know what to do with them. So I'm going to read them as, in as strings. And you can see it has a lot of different levels because those are all the dates that are in this file, right? Um, so it's actually about 2,000 daily observations that are in this file. Okay, um, so what we need to do in order to plot it meaningfully would be to convert the date string field, which is just this yyy hyphen mm hyphen dd, into a date variable in R. And R has very powerful uh, date manipulation functions. Again, I'm not an expert in these. Um, but you can basically convert dates into any format you like, reading them in and out. So here I'm just going to say, let's take the date variable in the Google data frame and convert it uh, into the appropriate format. So I'm going to use as.date, which means convert it from something that's a factor, which is just a, a string variable that takes on a, a number of unique values, into a date variable. So let's execute that command. And all that's going to do is replace the um, variable within the data frame with the correct formatted variable. And now just for fun, let's just do a plot of it. So let's plot date versus closing price. Um, I like to have time series plots where the, I connect the dots with dotted lines and the dots themselves are, um, uh, the, the data points themselves are represented by points. So I'm using plot to create all the dotted lines and then layering on top of plot, I'm putting points um, and I'm making the points a little smaller because there's thousands of data points here. So let's run this command just to see how that's done. Okay, and there is now a time series plot of the Google closing price uh, throughout this period of time. You can see the Great Recession there, um, the crash, um, and then the uh, uh, trend since then, which has made so many so-called Google millionaires. Okay, so that's a little bit about input-output into R. Um, 
you, you can see it's very, very powerful. I've only scratched the surface here, but I've covered the main things, which is getting things in and out of R as common delimited files or tab delimited files or delim free, free form, format text files and how to read in an Excel workbook and reference various portions of the workbook uh, with the XLS X package. So again, uh, have fun with R and bye for now.